Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and Age of Extinction's first wave of deluxes has a second Dino Knight standing vigilant in its case assortment. The purple berserker, Slug, absolutely will not have you calling him Slag. He'll totally headbutt your house until it falls over, and you apologize for that slight, good sir. He's got a big act to follow after Scorn, so let's see how he turned out. Slug's Triceratops mode is a quadruped lump of horns and spikes. He looks a bit less like he's made of knives when compared to Scorn and Grimlock, but Slug's got a solid outer spinal plating that works with his layered purple bulk to really get across that he's a walking bulldozer. Nearly all his paint is focused up front, on the big silver shoulder spikes and that goddamn head. Looking less like a Triceratops and more like a Quinceratops, Slug's got cranial horns, a nasal horn, and straight-up twin goatee-style chin horns. His flared crest has a nice wild red pattern all over it, and his eyes are proper movie Dinobot psychotic. Oh yeah, he's also got some terribly silly weapon storage. I'm not sure if the silly is winning out over the terrible, but I will admit that he'd probably take out an entire city block if he charged down the street with two huge spinning blades sticking out of either kidney, even though they're actually just inside his robot mode hands. Spoiler alert. Sometimes when an alt mode has joints or is a beast or something, I get a bit carried away and the video gets a bit longer, but in the case of Slug, that ain't gonna happen, because his rear legs basically don't move. If you try to move them, like, they can do this a little bit. It's about the gist of it. You can wiggle his foot if you really want to. It's not really meant to move all that much. His tail can, like, do that, I guess. Again, it's not really accomplishing a whole lot. His front legs are specifically jointed for this mode. There's a, a ball joint at the, I guess, the shoulder. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room, although stuff's going to bang together a whole lot. And then there's a hinge here for the, uh, the elbow. That's it, though. So there's a little bit of variance here in the front. You can have him, like, looking like he's going to stand firm or looking like he's walking or drunk. But that's about it. Uh, his mouth can't open and close, and it's uh, pretty satisfying. He's like, hang, hang, hang. And you might notice it's bending a little bit. I haven't touched on this a whole lot on, uh, on a lot of these guys, but uh, Slug here has a lot of it, and that is uh, bendy plastic. Uh, Scorn had some as well. And, uh, I, I should have mentioned back then, this stuff ain't that bad. I mean, it gets bending when I do this. I'm sure if you, like, do this and leave it like that for a few hours, it might get malformed. But it's a pretty tough rubbery plastic. Like, it, it has give, but it has a kind of firm core. See, all these horns are, are that stuff. And, uh, I don't think it really gets in the way of anything. All it, all it does that might be a detriment is it doesn't seem to be very easily painted, so it's not. But it doesn't seem to, like, bend and warp just while you're playing with this guy. Like, it'll get out of the way. But it's tough. It's like tough rubber. And I like me some tough rubber. So that's Slug. That's Slug posing. He's gonna go and, uh, I don't know, eat some floor and then transform. The back half of Slug is fairly predictable between the upfolding tail and unfurling legs. Everything feels nice and solid in motion. However, things get rather interesting, and the rest of the Triceratops basically moves into position, with a bit of difficulty in the case of the front legs, to split friggin' open. This reveals a majority of the robot mode, and all remaining steps are for tightening and cosmetic enhancement. But I've got to give one more thumbs up to the forearms. They're pretty much the Tricera belly split in half and then rolled up into Popeye pythons, and it's a great use of the existing mass. And now, just one thing left to do... Yes! Perfection! Suffice to say, Slug continues to look like a wrecking machine even when transformed into a biped. Still sticking with the Dino Knight theme of his comrades, Slug's bulked out like a mother, but still has enough of a clear skeleton to not come off as unwieldy. He's less of a ball of beef and more of a muscular man in mammoth armor. His shoulder pads are pretty much ridiculous, even with the Triceratops crest split up to form some frontal ornamentation, so regardless of my admiration for them, I can understand some people just shaking their head and saying, this is too much! Slug's head sculpt is even more knightly than Scorn's, as it's straight up a frog-mouthed Stechhelm. This plays into some cool thematics, as that helm is classically a jousting headpiece, and this guy has hella horns. I love the extra swipe of blue paint inside the ocularium, too. Those lance-like swords that totally didn't gel into their dino mode storage simply do not have any storage I can find in robot mode, outside of his hands. 
They're the same slightly rigid rubber as slugs, horns, and tail, and feature a weird slit that feels like it should be used for something, but only really keeps them stuck together in packaging. They do have an obvious forward guard over the handle, and top off slugs robot mode pretty well. Oh, your neck ball joint. When I try to make you look up, your head just comes off. Oh well. I tried. I really did. There's actually nothing I can see to, to fix that either. I think it's just the, the placement of the socket is too far back. And there's just no, there's no range in there. Uh, on the bright side, he can still look left and right with a, a decent amount of arc. And he can peer down at his own navel and just think about the world. Slug's shoulders are on straight up ball socket joints. This guy is really the one who's got dust on his head and who's refuting my whole idea of like, man, there are less ball joints on this toys because he's got a ball socket joint in his shoulders and he's got a ball socket joint on his hips and he had ball socket joints back here on these, these dino legs. So thanks for making me look dumb, slug, especially when your name is Slug. His elbows are just a straight up hinge. You can even see the uh, the mushroom joint there, well, the mushroom cap joint. And uh, the range is okay. It's like a 90 degree bend. And with huge forearms like this, that's uh, that's pretty nice to see because I'm still in like Nika mode where this would go like about this far and then the armor would bang together. He also has a bicep swivel and uh, his wrists can do this. And they can do this with enough of an arc in both directions while not dislocating to actually be kind of useful. Like you can use that to give him some slight curvature, like an inward U shape to his arm to accomplish what the gorilla arms I hate always try to accomplish, and this just does it better. Um, his shoulder pads are not part of his shoulder articulation. They can move up and down a little bit, but uh, generally, by having his shoulders here, this means that you don't have to worry too much about stuff banging together. His forearms may kind of collide against this stuff on the sides of his flanks, these uh, little dino legs, but it's not too critical. It just means that you can't have his arms super close to his body. Uh, these things... They do move up and down due to the transformation, and sometimes when you're playing with them, they will start to get unsymmetrical and bang together a little bit. Um, so there's there's a, a tiny bit of collision up here, but way less than you might think looking at this guy at first glance. Also, these, like, split Triceratops skeleton heads can open and close their mouths so you can, like, you know, have his good side going like, Don't do it, slug! And it's, no, do it! Step on that baby! No, stepping on babies is poor manners! You're a knight! Step on the baby! It's full of the plague! And you can have fun doing that. This guy also has a waist joint, and I think he's the only deluxe uh, Dinobot, the only Dinobot so far, with an intended waist joint that doesn't have some kind of piece of engineering that's getting in the way of it twisting or, you know, just not existing at all. Grimlock doesn't have one, and Scorn has that stupid thing that plugs in the back that you can just ignore. So that's good. I actually thought this was a transformation step for a while. I was like, man, what a weird loincloth this dude has. But no, that's actually a, a, that's a hind plate. So you don't have to worry about any kind of stuff up front. He's got knees, and uh, they've got this simple 90 degree bend and then he's got another knee joint from the transformation ostensibly giving him double jointed knees that look pretty good i mean it's a bit of a square shape when you bend it all the way but hey eh, i think it looks okay and his feet can do that or they can go up even farther and there's so much stuff that forms a kind of rocky heel that this is a little bit useful because it means you can have him like put his heel down then bend this down to to keep the figure standing solidly with his leg in, uh, in an angle to the to the ground and you can have him like stepping forward and move this like this is a transformation joint on a foot that actually is pretty useful you can also fold hands out of his knees if you're feeling like the kind of person who does that so his posability is uh, is pretty good it's not like uh mind-blowing but he has a lot of points of articulation none of them are really limited all that much the the biggest limitation is on his head where he can't really look up or well, you can even tilt his head pretty well. He just can't really look up. Uh, the, the farthest the farthest up he can incline his head is to look straight forward. And when you're a bulldozer, berserker-like slug, I think that's, that's all you really want to do is just keep looking straight forward and keep charging on ahead.
He doesn't hit every single mark the way Scorn did for me, but Slug is a respectable comrade and overall solid deluxe. The nature of his design leads to some parts crashing in both the transformation and articulation departments, but I am very happy with the number of posing options available to me, with all the girth embedded on his body. And on a figure this bulky, I've got to once again say that the build quality of these toys so far is really up to snuff. While there are a few throwbacks to predecessor Dinobot Triceratopses, Slug reinforces what Grimlock began. The movie Dinobots are savage knights, each with their own major identifying color. We may see G1E repaints down the road, but to be quite honest, I'm way more into these guys with these colors. Hell, I'm already dreading that the film will desaturate them into varied monotones. If you want throwbacks, they are extremely subtle in these Dinobots, if they are there at all. So don't expect anything to play to a nostalgic taste that you aren't already seeing in this video. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and between Slug and Scorn, I am really looking forward to the next wave's pair of Dinobot recruits. If all the deluxe Dinobots are this well done, they may be my favorite Transformers toy team in a while. Kyoryu Kishi Sentai Dinoger has arrived.